Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Now in this video, I'm gonna show you genuinely useful tips into optimizing Killing Floor 3. So what I'm gonna do is help you maximize the performance of this game. I'm gonna help you get smoother frame rates and way better visuals. So uh, for me, this added about 30 to 40 extra FPS. Um, it's also made the visuals better, so the anti-aliasing is better, the reflections are better, and all around, I'm just having a way more fun Z destroying time. And the first tip I'm about to show you is a game changer. So this tip is uh, a little odd, I'm gonna warn you. Um, it's not something that you're gonna find in the settings of the game. Instead, we're gonna go outside of the game. And what we're gonna do is tinker around in the game's files. So, um, you know, this is something that obviously is only open to PC players, but don't worry if you do play on console, I'm also gonna show you a few ways you can optimize this for console a bit later on in the video. But for now, we're gonna start with a really, really impactful thing, and that is a tip to pretty much increase everything. And I'm not lying when I say this, this is gonna increase um, the uh, lighting, the shadows, the frame rates, even the way your mouse works. Step one, go to this PC. The next step is to click on the drive where Killing Floor 3 is located. For me, it's the C drive. Now go down to users and select your name. My name is Griff, so this is what it looks like for me, but it's probably unlikely to be your name. Now select app data, but if app data is not in your uh, PC, then go up to view, then select file name extensions and hidden items. With both of these selected, app data will show up. Now select local and then scroll down to Nightfall. Nightfall is the working title of Killing Floor 3. So it's what uh, it's going to be known as. Now select saved and then go to config. Once you're inside config, go to Windows clients. And here, what you're gonna see is just one of these files. So the file that you're gonna see is um, the game user settings any. You're not actually gonna see the engine.ini file because that's something I added myself. So you're gonna see game user settings any. And uh, what you're gonna do here is create your own file. So right click, select new, and then select text documents. Now call this text document the following. Call it input.ini. Any. The I in the input has to be a capital, so make sure it's a capital I, not a lowercase i. Once you've done that, double click on it, so you open up the file, and then copy and paste the following command. I'm gonna uh, link this in the description, so all you have to do is copy and paste this right in here. Once this is in, save this and you've done it. Now, what does this do? Well, it turns off the field of view scaling, um, and that's a really important thing. So what is field of view scaling? Well, field of view scaling or FOV scaling refers to how the game adjusts the field of view when you change your view, such as when you aim down sights. Simply put, the higher the field of view scaling, sometimes the worse the performance is. Now, Killing Floor 3 actually uses field of view scaling and you can't ordinarily turn this off. So if you go into the settings, you can't turn off field of view scaling. This, as mentioned, has an impact on the game's performance. What this command does is essentially turn off the field of view scaling, thus increasing the performance of the game. This command also turns off mouse smoothing. Now, if you're new to mouse smoothing and you don't know what this is, it's essentially a technology that aims to make mouse movements appear smoother by reducing jitter and creating a more consistent cursor movement. However, there is a downside to this in that it can add a delay uh, to your game. Again, Killing Floor 3 has, has mouse smoothing on by default and you can't turn it off unless you use this command. Um, why does it add a delay? Well, because it relies on averaging, mouse smoothing can introduce a slight delay between the physical mouse movements and the cursor's on-screen response. So this is really important if you're playing on mouse and keyboard uh, and you're um, experiencing some slight delay and some kind of input weirdness. What you wanna do is turn this off using this command. But we're gonna optimize the game even more with a second text document. So like you did before, uh, create a new text document and this one you're gonna call engine.ini. Make sure the E is a capital once again and then 
save that, create it, and then open it up. Now, copy and paste this command. I know it's a big one. I'm going to show you where to find this, but uh, this has loads of great effects on your game. Um, essentially, we have this person to thank. This is Be Cool 22 And what they've done is created a Reddit post where they've uh, pasted all of the commands you need which you can go ahead and just copy and paste right in to your any files. So uh, as they explain in this post, um, they write, I've checked the game default engine.ini file and created a config using values that are different to help make the game run better, as I'm trying to reach at least 90 FPS average while having decent visuals. After making changes, the game is more playable and it doesn't stutter as much anymore when killing Zs. So that's uh, basically their description of this guide. And I've tried this and checked it out and they're not lying. The game for me ran way better. I added about 20 to 30 extra frames on top of the performance. Um, and I'm averaging, I believe, around about 120 FPS. Not only that, but when I do play it with a mouse, the performance is slightly better. I'm not going to, you know, lie and say that you're going to notice a massive jump in the reaction times and the inputs. But um, yeah, maybe it's just me, but I feel like the mouse is just a bit smoother and a bit more reactive. So just to list some of the ways that they've optimized Killing Floor 3, uh, let's start with anti-aliasing. So they've tweaked the anti-aliasing to reduce ghosting and blur. That means the game is going to look slightly sharper. They've also improved the reflections, so the quality of the reflections are going to be much, much better. They've disabled chromatic aberration, which in other words is this sort of effect where it makes the um, edge of the screen look a bit blurred and a bit washed out um, and to make it look a bit more realistic rather than having a really clean image. However, in Killing Floor 3, the chromatic aberration isn't that convincing, so they've just gone and turned this off to result in a nice, clean image. They've disabled the vignette, which is the darker edge of the screen, so um, instead of having dark edges of the screen, the entire screen is going to be a uniform, consistently coloured and consistently lit uh, image. They've set Bloom to full resolution, um, so you're taking advantage of your machine there. And they've also set anisotropic filtering to times 16, so it's max filtering. The shadow quality is going to be better, and the resolution is going to be better of those shadows as well. So those are just a few ways this uh, post optimizes your game. And these are effects you can only get by messing with the any files. So you can't actually get this by uh, using the settings in game. You have to go out of game and have a little play around. Um, but with results like this, you might as well do it. Now, one final step, and this is really important. What you want to do is set your files to read only. If you don't set your files to read only, they will get deleted. And then you just have to do this whole thing again. Um, you don't uh, have to worry about the game messing up because uh, these files are not going to mess your game up. Uh, they just get deleted if you don't make them read only. So how do you make them read only? Well, it's really simple. All you have to do, I'm going to show you how to do this with the uh, engine.ini file. So right click and then go down to show more options, which is down here. And then go to properties and then select read only at the bottom and then just select OK. Uh, the same again with the uh, inputs.ini, so show more options, properties, and then read only. Then select OK. And then if you just want to have a little check, right click, show more options, properties, and there we go. Read only. And that means uh, these files are just not going to get deleted by the game. So that's how to massively optimize Killing Floor 3 and improve basically every facet of this game, such as the lighting, the shadows, the anti-aliasing, all that lovely stuff. And not only that, but uh, as I mentioned, the field of view and also the mouse input. So it's going to make your mouse a bit more reactive. But it doesn't stop there because I'm going to show you a few more ways to optimize the performance and the visuals of Killing Floor 3. And these are all ways you can do in the settings of the game. So what you need to do is go into settings, uh, scroll across to video, and then go down to uh, the graphics quality presets. And what you want to do here is select low. Now, everything should be on low here except one very important thing, and that is texture quality. Bump this all the way up to ultra. And don't worry about this sapping any frames through your machine 
because you've put everything on low, you can afford to put this texture quality on ultra and textures have the most drastic impact out of any uh, visual quality presets that is in Killing Floor 3. Don't ask me how it works, it just does. I've done a lot of experimenting and this really does work. So it makes it look great and it also makes it perform great. But that's not all because there are a few other options in the settings we can select to uh, make the game run better and also look decent as well. So we're gonna go down to Bloom, make this on standard. So make sure the Bloom is on standard and the lens flare should be off. Lens flare intensity to zero. And what this does is make sure the lens flare is not distracting and it results in a cleaner image. Okay, next we're gonna go down to reflection method. You want this on SSR. And then global illumination you want to none. Uh, the reflections are going to look great uh, and they're not going to be too expensive um, because with SSR the reflections are only limited to the objects on the screen. This means they're not really um, reflecting back things that aren't on the screen and therefore uh, sapping your frame rate even more. For the NVIDIA settings we can just disable reflex and DLSS frame generation set to off. For super sampling, this is another really important thing, and this is going to make sure you have the best frame rate possible. Uh, NVIDIA DLSS is the one you want to use. Now, I've done a lot of playing around with this. Uh, I've played around with the TSR, the AMD FSR, and the Intel XESS, but out of all of them, hands down, none of them hold a candle to DLSS. So select that, and then DLSS quality mode is balanced. And that's it. That's all of the things you need in the settings to balance the performance with the visuals. And here's what it looks like once again. Absolutely, incredibly smooth frame rates and pretty nice graphics as well. Now, you will notice a bit of kind of weird shadows there. They're not incredibly uh, realistic. There is a bit of flickering on the shadows, but um, if you wanted to have better shadows, it will come at a cost of the frame rate. And what this guide is aiming to do is to balance the performance and the frame rate. Now, I did say there's the gamma that I wanted to show you, and the gamma is another really important thing, um, but I've separated it so we're not getting too confused on the visuals. But uh, here's what the gamma looks like uh, by default. So it is quite dark. You will have to use your torch. Um, I guess this is a horror game, but sometimes you want a bit of brightness, especially with the darker levels. Um, because, I mean, in this area it is quite light, so you don't really need the torch, but when you do get into the darker stages, you know, like the sewers, the city streets, it can get incredibly dark. And what you want is to have a slightly lighter image so you can see all of those zombies. So here's what the gamma looks like when we play around with it a bit. So go into settings, go to video, and then go down to gamma. Where is the gamma? It's right here. So calibrate gamma and then bump this up to about here. So make sure you can see on the left the Killing Floor 3 logo. Make sure you can see that nice and bright. It does say adjust the brightness settings until the image on the left is barely visible, which is down here. But that's not how you want uh, this game to look, at least in my opinion. I want it to be nice and bright so I can see all of the enemies. So accept that. Save that. And here we go. It's a lot brighter. It's just on the verge of looking washed out, but it's not quite washed out. It's just the best brightness you can get while still retaining those dark uh, shadows and also, you know, making sure the contrast is optimal. Now, it does look quite bright here, I will admit. But again, like I said, when you get to those dark environments, um, you know, you're going to need the, the most brightness you possibly can get. So that's this is how I like my gamma. But for you, it might be different. Just wanted to show you how uh, the gamma works for me. Now, what we can do here gets interesting because we can use the settings as the new baseline. In other words, we can use this as the default template for the game, and then we can experiment by bumping up other graphical settings. The one for me that needs uh, maximizing is the reflections because the reflections make this game look absolutely incredible. They have done some crazy work on the reflections in this game. And, uh, you know, I'm just going to show you a little comparison. So this is what the uh, reflections look like using our new templates. But as you can see, because we're using SSR, the reflections kind of disappear when we move around, which isn't that 
realistic. I know we're going to be, uh, you know, going after zombies and not really looking at the floor, but still, if you are paying attention, it's the kind of thing that might just drive you mad, or at least it will drive me mad. So what I like to do is put the reflections on maximum. And this, uh, on my machine anyway, it does retain my frame rate. It might be different for you, but that's why we're in the, uh, the stronghold. We're experimenting. So go down in the settings menu and then go to reflection quality. Then we're going to whack this on ultra just to have a little test. You know, it's not set in stone. We're just playing around and seeing what our machine can handle. Uh, and then we're going to go down to reflection method, keep that on SSR and then global illumination method. Have this on lumen hit save. Now let's see how the game handles this. Okay. And the frame rate is pretty much exactly the same, but now we look at the reflections and as you can see the reflections remain in the floor no matter where we are in the world you can see it from everywhere a lot better all the floors look a lot more shiny and uh yeah it kind of just makes me want to run and slide on my knees if you enjoy the video don't forget to subscribe to the channel and for more on killing floor 3 i'll see you next time